we've slept on this video. We haven't been able to get to it, but I'm excited to get to it now. Um, Casual Geographic made a wholesome video I like, for Mother's I like Day. Wholesome videos. You know how he always says to hug your mother at the end of every video. Yes. So Mother's Day has to be a big one for him. Uh, he created an entire video for it that's called Animals That Deserve a Second Mother's Day. I'm excited. So these are going to be some loving, nurturing, awesome, yeah. wholesome moms. I mean, it's so sad whenever you hear about an animal and they're like, the minute that it's out, they could give a fuck less what happens yeah, to Or it. they're fighting it automatically, oh, like yeah. on side. Yeah. Fuck this thing. There's some weird behavior when it comes to... Um, animals and, and, and motherhood. But I would imagine this is going to be a super wholesome one, which makes me excited. Yeah. And uh, I want to check it out. All so right. are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I love that video. <gasps> Being a mom is a thankless job, and I personally couldn't have any of it. I According to salary.com, if moms got paid for every single thing they did, we're talking about like housekeeping, chef, school tutor, financial manager, uh, nurse, nutritionist, management analyst, HR department, driver. If you add it all up, we're looking at mothers earning an annual salary of $184,820. And that's for the stay at home more. If you manage to have a job on top of that, good luck, Charlie. Let's just think about it like this. SpongeBob was employee of the month 374 straight times. Carried the Krusty Krab like LeBron in Cleveland. Literally had to pay his boss to work there. And took it all with a smile. Bro played mommy for five days and nearly caught a life sentence on the six. Yeah. It's hard being a mom, especially since humans make the most helpless babies in nature. We pretty much stay that way for the next 18 years. Mm. And this is because the insanely high learning curve of being a oh functional God. member of society means that babies have the self-preservation skills. See, that's exactly oh what God. I was worried about doing why on my the biggest birthday. Mama's boys in nature. It literally takes them seven, eight, sometimes nine years to be emancipated from oh their mothers. Oh my god. Orangutans are the heaviest animals to spend most of their lives in the trees. It's the best life insurance policy when your first floor neighbors Fifty Shades of Find Out if you want to. It's why the orange ape not only plays floors lava for as long as it's alive, Mama Orang builds a bed from scratch for her child and herself to sleep in, and she'll make a new bed every single night. In her life, she'll make thousands. That's she'll crazy. also spend the better part of a decade teaching her little man of the forest how to orangutan. And she does it without an iPad or a melon. She iron man's that shit. <laughs> the motherly bond is so strong that, just like with humans, the Orangs will often stay with or around their mothers even when they're past the age of being independent. Daughters might move out once they reach maturity at 12, but they'll still live close by and visit the mother Orang every so often until they eventually have children of their own at like 15 or 16. But even that doesn't always cut the cord since orangutans have been recorded visiting their mothers with their own baby in tow just to give them an opportunity to meet their grandchild. The guys are usually the ones to dip out earlier oh my and God. move out to claim a territory of their own. But every once in a while, one of nature's biggest man children will spend their bachelor teen years being molly coddled by their mothers rent free and it's obviously not just orangutans apes in general kind of have the whole mother thing figured out a good example of that is binti joa ironically she was rejected by her own mother and had to be raised Aww. and taught how to gorilla by humans and that included how to properly care for her own child kula well one day in 96 a kid did what kids seemed to do best Fall into a gorilla pen and make it the gorilla's oh, problem. Which no. Binti Joa handled by cradling the unconscious three-year-old and gently carrying that. and placing him to a door where zoo officials could get to him. All with 17-month-old Kula hanging from her, watching it all go down. Oh Not my like, God. seriously, it really always is gorillas. You never hear a story about a kid no, trying to have but Yeah, great apes are the undisputed could. mama's champs of nature, and elephants are a close second. Right off the bat, elephants are one of the best mothers on earth and really should get a medal just for Winley going through two years of mourning sickness. Elephants spend 22 months pregnant and the next what? five years raising a 200 pounds of mass that falls well, out. Well, that's of huge. Males don't usually leave their mothers until about 16 and females usually don't leave at all. And since most of the herd is often blood related, not only is the big baby raised by a mom, but also an army of aunts, cousins, and grandmothers. Holy too. shit. Elephants will also have baby showers where they celebrate the birth with an orchestra of trumpets and rumbles because they are the only animals I'm too that can emotional for this. Are you crying? version of themselves. Celebrating. And that's because they know anyone that wants anything with the baby got to see a 60,000 pound wall of weaponized estrogen first. They'll even make the baby shower literal by kicking up sand and dirt all over the newborn calf. But it's actually ah. to protect its sensitive skin from the brutal sun and possibly even to mask its scent from predators looking for a come up. Speaking of which, wow. very few things get to mess with the baby elephant and live with the consequences. This is an elephant assaulting a crocodile with extreme prejudice. Oh, Jesus. Now, I don't have the whole backstory here, but considering what it takes to get curb stomped by nature's hydraulic press, that croc 100% pressed the wrong elephant's kid. 
and not even other elephants get a pass. Angsty bulls will often resort to bullying smaller cats <gasps> when they want to mate. What? And that's a great way to start a track race with every other pissed off pachyderm in the district. Elephants are so devoted to their children, they'll even confront their biggest op if it means saving them. The biggest threat to elephants aren't lions, hyenas, or down bad bulls. It's us. Oh. <laughs> they know it. So when My an elephant started God. Running, people were understandably freaked out. But eventually, some people followed her and she led them to her baby stuck in a ditch. And it wasn't until some good Samaritans dug the not so little guy out that she left with her rescued calf by her side. Keep in mind that elephant human relations aren't exactly the best in Asia, and hundreds have been murked by farmers trying to protect their crops. Yeah. So this was the equivalent of a human walking up to a grizzly for her child's sake. And this was far from the only time something like this would happen. This one isn't as serious, but apparently this baby elephant slept so soundly that the world's biggest land mother panicked and immediately went to the zookeepers for help, which they did by waking him up. So, you know, happy ending, I guess. Elephants are so committed to their kids that even though they can live for up to 70 years, they only have about four to five kids in their lives. Lucky for her, she has the support of the herd, led by a grandmother matriarch who uses her experience to guide the group. It's actually the same thing orcas do. Orcas are one of the few animals that go through metaphors. Wow. You could probably count the rest on one hand. And scientists believe that this happens because orcas are top tier grandmothers. By giving up the chance of having children past a certain age, not only is the elderly orca able to help raise her kids' kids, it also raises the risk for competition for resources. All while using her vast knowledge and wisdom to help guide the next generation, just like with elephants. Like and it has been scientifically dark. proven yeah. that growing up around your grandmother greatly increases your quality of life. Having an OG around means the new kids on the pond have a much better chance of survival. And no orca was more of an original grandmother than Granny. A female killer whale believed to have lived to over 80 years old, having helped bring up several grand and great grandchildren in her pod, proving that grandmothers are in fact OP. And the mamas don't <laughs> be slacking either. Matter of fact, forget what I said about elephants and orangs. If these zebras are about anything, it's their mothers. To the point that recent studies have shown that mother orcas will straight up sacrifice opportunities to have more children just to keep taking care of their adult sons. And at least the ginger apes get an empty nest eventually. Resident orcas are pretty much handcuffed to their kids for life. And like any mother to a man baby, she'll do anything for her little boy. Ugh. Including homicide. In 2016, a mother and son duo were recorded attacking a baby orca with the son reverse baptizing it and his mom keeping the victim's mom from intervening like some type of one-man orca O-line. And it's believed that this was an example of a male murking a baby to mate with its mother and orca Bundy's mom running no. interference and her son eventually give her a grandchild. L Morality, but W Wingman. Or I guess in this case, wing mom. Another thing is, not only do ocean orioles negotiate the rest of their lives when having children, they also give up their sleep schedule. Orcas and other dolphins will stay awake for a yeah. month or more straight after the birth of a calf. Calves can't afford to rest since moving around constantly helps keep them warm in the ice chilled waters until their blubber comes in. And always being on go makes them less of an easy lick for predators. But it also means that mother dolphins go on a dream diet for as long as their children do. And during that time, the calves learn how to dolphin by mimicking every single thing it sees its mother do. It basically becomes her shadow as she teaches it everything it'll ever need to become a future menace to society. All <laughs> while running on zero sleep. Sleep Fuck isn't that, a problem dude. for a koala though, but because it's koala, almost everything else is. Koalas are notoriously tragic at every avenue of existence, <laughs> but they do beat the mid-allegations when it comes to their mothering. Especially since the rest of the marsupial family really doesn't. Quokkas and kangaroos are known to sacrifice their own child by dropping them out of their pouch to let the predator chasing them deal with it. And Tasmanian devils will have 30, sometimes 40 joeys, and the mother will eat all but the final four that make it to her nipular regions. Koalas though, they have one joey, and she makes it her entire world. If she gets chased by a pack of dogs or stalked by a wedge tail, there is no eject the offspring, either they both make it or it's two packs in one. Also, mother koalas do go out of their way to provide for their children. Just not in the way anyone has oh, to see. Don't no. watch this ball while eating, you know what's coming. But the one thing koalas insist on making their defining trait to eat can't even be digested by them. Koalas eat a special gut bacteria to break down eucalyptus. Without it, they can eat as much as they want. No. Hashtag to hunger. It's why you can't treat a koala with chlamydia with antibiotics, because if you anti their biotics, they'll be out of life. So mama koala passes on the bacteria by feeding her precious child nuggets. Rush from the I'm source. Not looking. To be fair, it is actually different from the usual deuces she drops from that end, but technicalities don't really matter when it's being served from a koala's brown eye. But the ah! is all Joey can now get all the nutrients he needs to be the best or just look how cute the babies koala are. can be. The one Focus upside to on the cute. is that koalas rarely ever need Focus. to drink actual water. They usually just get what they need from the leaves. We don't have it that easy. And it's not as simple as just downing gallons of water a day, since that can really mess with your electrolyte levels. Which can be a problem if you're an athlete and constantly sweating it out throughout the day. Another an story ad. bush bears will never know. 
And for y'all that don't know, I actually just got done with fasting for a whole month, and as anyone who has done it will tell you, eventually, it's not even about the food. It's about not being able to drink with the sun watching. Mm. Especially if you're stubborn enough to work out or play basketball during it. Like me. Something <laughs> that probably would have turned me full-time horizontal if it wasn't for Liquid IV. Okay, ah. Liquid, ah. Liquid IV was a lifeline since drinking just one of the hydration multipliers and you if twice you as have pots, as water on its own. this will That's help you too. twice as fast, not as much. Just saying. And it also supplies you with essential vitamins B3, B5, B6, B12, and good old vitamin C. It's really good for if you haven't hydrated much throughout the day and want to re-up without guzzling water like a camel in the Sahara. It's actually kind of funny because I didn't even realize I was using Liquid IV way before they offered to sponsor me until they sent me their stuff. And it's pretty straightforward. You just pour the Liquid IV into the bottle, shake a little, and just drink. Easy. So easy a koala could do it. <laughs> Maybe. So if you want to try some of the flavors Liquid IV has to offer, click the link in the description to get a three-count hydration Citrus is the only one that's lime, drinkable. Concord grape and golden cherry. Shipping absolutely free. So yeah, check them out if you're interested. Unless you're a koala, because again, they don't really need water to begin with. Truthfully, I don't know that they understand the concept what the of fuck? Water, But all memes aside, the koala is actually pretty underrated as a provider, but probably not as underrated as snakes. You probably wouldn't expect a serpent to get talk time in a video like this. No. For a while, neither did scientists. We kind of just assume snake parenting is just, once you got the shell, I wish you well. And that's that. Turns out the central African python will actually look after her family of snakelets a couple weeks after what? they hatch. Snakelets. The mother python guards her kids and coils around the brood to keep them warm. And the same predator that can successfully deep throat a hyena and win will babysit over 50 hatchlings until they're able to make it in the outside world. It's only like two to three weeks, but it's a lot better than most snakes get fresh out the shell. Most just get spawned into life on veteran difficulty and gotta figure out the rest from there. Reptiles in general are usually less involved than a cartoon parent. And that's really saying something. These kids had no business making it past the age of three. Not a single one. But with a lot of reptiles like turtles, they drop and dip. The most parenting they yeah. do is just having a bunch of you and hoping that just one lives long yeah. enough to continue the cycle. If you happen to get spawned into a snake orgy and have to do the race off rip, that's your business. But not all reptiles are negligent. Alligators are incredibly and weirdly devoted mothers. Yeah. The same homicide I didn't know that. Yeah. Its own kind. Basically, she builds a nest for her eggs and then threatens to life expire anything that gets near them. And once the eggs are ready to hatch, they'll call out to the mother from the nest to get her to dig them out. And the same vice grip jaws that can eviscerate a grown man also manage to be gentle enough to help any baby struggling to hatch on their own by lightly cracking the shell. For the next year, she's nature's best bodyguard, carrying her kids to wow. one place nobody would be stupid enough to reach into. Especially other gators, because as mentioned, they be on Dahmer timing. Croc mothers are just as protective. But with a lot of things in the neighborhood being down for croc omelets, sometimes it's not enough to just have one person looking after them. Some birds and crocodiles will actually work together what? to protect each other's children in something like a neighborhood watch group. You see, it starts with a bird like a spotted dick up, also known as a thick knee or a stone curlew, laying her family of eggs right next to a clutch of future crocs. That way the giant living snare trap will scare off most threats from even getting near the nest. The trade-off is, if an op like a monitor lizard pulls up all the crocus away, then as it far calls. as the bird's concerned, it's a fade on sight. The dick ops will harass and square up to the monitor to protect what? the crocodile's what? What eggs. Not only what does it slow do? down and probably confuse the hell out of the monitor, the calls of the bird are like a siren for the crocs, who instantly pull up to the nest the moment they hear it. Ain't that some the shit? Cool. Places a crocodile baby monitor to protect both families from an actual one. I'd call it teamwork, but Mama Croc could really scramble the bird's child right in front of her and think nothing of it. Yeah. That's the kind of gamble this bird takes. Some birds make a similar deal with gators. Some birds will go out of their way to start a family right above a group of alligators. And just like with the thick knee and the croc, the alligators protect the birds from smaller predators like raccoons and opossums just by existing. They pay the gators off by yeeting the weakest child out the nest on some straight Sparta type of beat. The bird parents oh. get to use resources on chicks that actually have a chance at life, and the gators get free protein airdrop to their head. Lots no. of birds have ways of keeping their next generation from becoming past tense. A bird no. will, will fake a career-ending injury in order to get a predator's attention, and then act like it's limping over to its final resting spot in order to lead the predator away from a hidden clutch of eggs. Then there's the hornbill. This alternative toucan seals herself inside the nest with a literal wall of shit, a mixture of fruit paste, mud, and poop. The wall takes hours, sometimes days to build, and only once she Gross. herself will she lay her eggs. And for the next three to five months, the hornbill's entire world is that tiny dark birth room. She commits to the role even further by molting all of her flight feathers, and she's pretty much grounded for the foreseeable future. She does have the father to funnel her food through the tiny opening, but it also means if her partner slips up and gets put on a milk carton, that nest becomes a coffin for her and her children. Up to five months of not only self-imposed quarantine, but Shit. every second of it with a bunch of newborns. 
Not only that, but she gets the honor of shoveling out the piles of digested fruit mush her babies assault her with multiple times a day. Because what goes in will come out. It's literally five months of the same sh different day, and we'd be popping BC like Tic Tacs if we had to do half of that. And then there's the white crowned plover, who will literally select violence with anything that gets anywhere near their nest. Any baboon or monitor lizard that tries gets dealt with with extreme prejudice. Because Damn. these birds believe in EOF, equal opportunity fails. But probably the best bird mom of all would probably be the hummingbird. Mainly because she has to bring up the entire family by herself. The male doesn't contribute anything Those beyond Those things are so better. cool. He can't even be bothered to build the nest. All of it's on her, which she does, assembling a teacup-sized nest from scratch. From then on, if she's not incubating the eggs to keep them alive, she's looking for food to keep herself going. Which is already hard enough since a hummingbird can easily go from feast to flatline if they go more than a couple hours between meals. Motherhood only becomes more of a jihad once the egg or eggs hatch. Because now, she pretty much has to work overtime to carry the gene pool without folding on herself or her children. The thing is, the motherhood buff is so crucial that some hummingbirds like the ruby-throated single-handedly have some of the highest nesting rates of birds in that area. It's about 45 days straight from when she starts constructing the nest to when the little hummers can make it out on their own. And the first thing she does when they move out is start the entire process all over. No, seriously, she'll <laughs> often raise two families back to back in one summer. She does it all with a father that couldn't be more of a deadbeat if his heart retired. So yeah, hummingbirds might be some of the most underappreciated single so mothers cute. in nature. Probably not as much as the cheetah though. Single mm. parenting was a sport she'd be D1 from day one. Like the hummingbird, she hard carries the entire family while the baby daddy drops a load and hits the road. But unlike the hummingbird who has to look <laughs> after one or two, mother cheetahs are responsible for three, four, sometimes up to six cubs. And it's not like she has a roster of aunties to help play daycare. She's on her own. Every time she goes out for groceries, there's a small chance she comes back to a chalk outline where her kid used to be. And with lions, leopards, hyenas, and wild dogs all being major ops to a cheetah's pursuit of happiness, in some places, only 10% of the cheetah cubs that come out actually make it to adulthood. It's such a struggle that cheetahs will often overheat after a successful hunt. But not because like their systems need to cool down, but because the anxiety of catching food and not knowing how long until a pride of lions comes in and presses you for your plate literally causes them to stress heat. The flight or fight response and evolution did not build cheetahs to fight. Now add in the fact that their hunting success rate is like 40% to begin with and now you see just how bad cheetah moms have. They're underrated mothers because if they weren't their entire population would be in a pack. A mother That's cheetah crazy. named Sabella successfully raised 19 cubs solo, meaning a third Holy of the cheetahs shit. in that area came from her. That's how hard she carried. Now they probably struggle less if they formed a coalition of females the same way males do, but until they do, cheetahs will continue to be the world's hardest working single mother. Or maybe a respectable second. There's one mom that just might top her. But before we go there, here are some dishonorable mentions. Moms that will personally make you appreciate the one you have more. The cuckoo, for using mob violence to force other birds to raise their children. The hawk, yeah. yeah. for abandoning her pup at two weeks old to go hook up with other males, even though the pup can't swim, move, or really do anything for itself for the next six weeks. Not to mention putting that type of stuff in polar bear country, it's actually villainous. Scorpions, because Mama Scorpion will carry her brood on her back to protect them from predators, but she'll also eat them if she doesn't get enough food herself. Quakos, for the aforementioned child eating. Pandas, because if she has twins, her negligence guarantees one of them is left to die. And that's assuming she doesn't roll over and accidentally de-life the one she chose. Pandas proved that China's one-child policy hit more than just people. But the most underrated mom in the entire animal kingdom? Definitely the octopus. Her arc reads like a Greek tragedy. The mother oh. octopus will spend months looking after thousands of eggs, during which she won't eat once. She'll negotiate one of her arms as a meal before she leaves her family unattended. Octomom does nothing but guard the eggs and gently Look wash them by squirting eggs. water over them for five months straight. And it's not like with the hornbill relying on her husband being an Uber Eats. The male octopus is already a casualty to post no clarity at this point. By the time the <laughs> eggs hatch, she's basically a moving corpse. Her immune system weakens, her body breaks down, and she just deteriorates. And if she doesn't fold to starvation, her story ends with being torn apart by predators while she's too exhausted to defend herself. Aww. It's why most octopus are born orphans. And sometimes it's not just for months. One mother octopus set a record after she protected her eggs for over four years. By far the longest brooding what? time I've ever seen. And even with the longer plot, the ending was still the same. Once the eggs finally hatched, the mother octopus finally got to rest. Permanently. So be glad you're not an octopus. They're born orphans, live like virgins, males get KO'd by acorn clarity, and starting a family ends with you getting unsubscribed from life. But that's gonna do it for this video. Damn, dude. Water, he went out. Look at them. In it. Yeah. If there was ever a day to hug your moms, it would be today. Tell her you appreciate her. And I mean her, like, not just Instagram. Like, actually tell her. Some of y'all moms don't even have Instagram and y'all do it. I... I never understood that. Thanks to Liquid IV for sponsoring this video. Shout out to my mom for sponsoring my existence. And I'm gonna see y'all in the next one. I've had some wild oh, oh, I remember that. But the emotions that I felt in my heart, I was nearly crying to get this close and be loved on by this beautiful, absolutely.
absolutely gorgeous. Mummy Orang was such a touching experience. One that I'll take with me for the rest of my life. Dude, why'd they have to put Steve Irwin at the end of it to just get me? Yeah, I know. I used to watch um, watch Animal Planet all the time. And I used to watch him all the time and his family. Nikki, you cried. I cried a little bit. Are you okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> this was a very sweet, very, uh, for the most part... Um, for the most part, for the wholesome. most part, it was very wholesome. I mean, there was he's always going to throw something in there yeah, to shoehorn yeah, yeah. the situation. I mean, you can't like highlight the good without saying like how shitty. Oh, by the way, them. you know, just a side yeah. note, it could be this bad. Yeah, I kind of get it, but yeah, this was very cute, and I do yeah. love the orangutan. Is one of my favorites. What was I saying? Oh yeah, I, I love, love orangutan. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I should have been born an orangutan. Mm -hmm. All you gotta do is just like be a mom and exist with your titties out, just <laughs> up in a tree. I thought you weren't gonna say that word. No, <laughs> oh, I, I did now say you're it. All about I it. did say it. Shit. <laughs> We've broke her, gents. We've done it. We have uh, made you say the word. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that would be a cool life, just yeah. to hang around in the trees. But the thing is, if you follow your tiger bait, yeah, that is That's not why cool. That's make a really... She makes a new bed every night. She seems yeah. like you just make one good one like once a month. And like, Shit's crazy. Oh. And speaking of shit being crazy, why do koalas have to eat poop? Why? And I didn't know that why? until like, what, like a year ago or something, and we were doing a reaction, and you told me, I was like... That's not true. Well, you and kept you're going like, on yeah. and on and on about how, like, oh, koalas are so cute. I'm like, yeah, but there's something about them that I just didn't made know. me. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, they are. Tom but... Horton said, so that's why Nikki called Titanic Titty Nick. Titty Nick, yeah. <laughs> so funny. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Jake says, wussy Nikki. Jake also said, Titties. <laughs> so funny. We're gonna have to just like cut and I don't move. even know if you're allowed to say that, but Probably whatever. Not. I mean, why would you not? Why be so sexist and hate on it? I mean it's part of the female anatomy. Yeah, you have titties too. Yeah, everybody just, does. Like what's the big what's the big fucking different. deal? Anyway, great video by Casual Geographic. I think this one was a lot of fun and I actually learned a few things about some of those birds. I didn't know that uh the a crocodiles and the Oh, yeah. And the, um, or the wall of crap. But I didn't know that there was the, you know... Eating your... No. <laughs> rare... Oh. I, I didn't know that there was the collusion between... Oh, yeah, the alligator. ...species to protect babies. And it's such a smart idea to lay your eggs right next to the gator eggs. That is so smart. Yeah. yeah but, what, but what if it was like... And just like crunched them. I mean, the better it's a better alternative. Look, you've got like a security force that, that you could never have. What about the? I don't even know what kind of birds those were. They were just eating their babies. Oh, like, oh yeah. yeah, this one's a runt. Fuck it. Nature's brutal, dude. But brutal. yeah, happy late Mother's Day to everybody who's a mother, yeah. and those of you who have them and love them are excited about their existence. Cool day for you, also. Uh, I know that we each got to say hi to ours and yeah. it was pretty cool um but anyway i think that's going to do it for this video much love to casual geographic and the awesome content that he produces if you haven't subscribed to his channel i recommend you do so yeah, if you like our the, reaction i was gonna say description it's in the title of the video you can find him <laughs> yeah um, but if you enjoyed our reaction to this, you can give us a like, subscribe to the channel. You could even recommend videos yes. for us to react to down the road. Down in the comments or on our discords where we're going to find it the easiest. And um, you can also tune in on Fridays at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over on our Twitch where we do live reactions. That would be cool. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out, guys. See, See ya. Guys.